Extract from The Life of Adam Martindale, written by himself, for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 10, War and Conflict. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Patrick Wallace. Now I was in a great strait how to dispose of myself. I abhorred to live idly and burden my father and besides i could no more be safe there than my brother henry for being above eighteen years old whereas sixteen would have brought me in i was as liable to the danger of dancing attendance at the general musters and thence to bolton as he to avoid both these inconveniences if possible though i was still rather too young i inquired after a school st helen's was then newly disposed of but holland and rainforth were both vacant i took holland for the like a place there being a pretty church town and a great number of freeholders and considerable yeomen in the neighbourhood. But I was there subject to so many great inconveniences. One, by the discouragements that many lay under to send their children in those days of constant alarms. Two, by the uncomfortableness of my habitation in a public house, to which many papists and drunkards did frequently resort. Three, by the disturbance given us by the soldiers often quartering among us, to the depriving us of our beds and chambers. Four, by the suspicion I lay under of being a roundhead, that is one for the Parliament, because my brother was gone to Bolton, and my father plundered upon it, and I could not clear myself from it by swearing and debauchery, but would have been quiet and meddled on no side. For these reasons, I say, I left the place when I had been there not much above a quarter of a year. Rainford being still open for me, I removed thither, having the promise of some substantial inhabitants, that they would send me their children upon the usual rates that my predecessors had, and also find me my diet by turns, as was customary also there. The first they performed well, and I had a pretty full school. The second they never offered to do, but suffered me to depend upon my father for it, whose house had been so ransacked and stripped by rude soldiers that he had scarce necessary goods left him for the plainest sort of housekeeping. Besides, I had great disturbance given me by several papists about me, and by a pragmatical constable, animated as I thought by them, who notwithstanding that the Parliament forces had so prevailed as to take Wigan and Warrington, Preston, and divers less considerable places, still warned me to musters, and though I excused myself as a piece of a clergyman, and kept away, I could not tell how it would go with me if I should be surprised and carried to Latham, counted then an impregnable place, where they did what they pleased within themselves. But among all these troubles I met with two cordials, helping to support my spirit. One, the marriage of my brother Henry to an older young woman of pious parentage, with whom he lived comfortably at a new brick house, which he built near Warrington, thriving fast in goodness and his outward estate, to his very death. She was after twice married, and lives with her third husband now in Manchester. Two, a sermon that I heard at St. Helens, preached by Mr. Smith, the minister there. He was under no great account for his abilities, but pious and serious, and in that sermon he did so lay forth the desperateness and damnableness of a natural estate without conversion, which before that time I had little minded, that I was roused to purpose, and this proved like a sharp needle, drawing after a silken thread of comfort in due season, so as, if I may without presumption lay claim to a work of grace, as I humbly hope, he was the chief instrument under God, and accordingly I honoured him as my spiritual father to his death. This mercy befell me as I was following my schoolwork diligently at Rainford, and writing a book of arithmetic for whole numbers and fractions, in the old method of record, hill, baker, etc., for then I knew nothing of decimals, logarithms, or algebra, but somewhat more contractedly, with an appendix of my own invention, touching extracting the roots of fractions. What became of that manuscript I do not now remember, but probably it was left at Liverpool with the rest of my books. Now, being wearied out at Rainford by the inconveniences before mentioned, and being at the same time sent to by Colonel Moore, who was then newly come from London to garrison Liverpool, and to raise a regiment of foot with a troop of horse, to live with him as his clerk, I accepted the motion, and he carried towards me pretty civilly. And in regard he was the only justice of peace in that part of the county, besides his military employment, I got money under him so as might well have satisfied me. But his family was such an hell upon earth as was utterly intolerable. 
there was such a pack of arrant thieves and they so artificial at their trade that it was scarce possible to save anything out of their hands except what i could carry about with me or lodge in some other house those that were not thieves if there were any such were generally if not universally desperately profane and bitter scoffers at piety and these headed by one that had a mighty influence over the colonel and was i never knew why become my implacable enemy i was therefore well content to come down a peg lower accepting of the chief clerk's place in the foot regiment which place though below the other for profit and credit gave me better content for now i lived in peace and enjoyed sweet communion with the religious officers of the company which used to meet every night at one another's quarters by turns to read scriptures to confer of good things and to pray together my work also was easy enough and such as gave me time for my studies being only to keep a list of the officers and soldiers names and to call them upon occasion nor was i to carry either musket pike halbert or any other weapon only for fashion's sake i wore a sword as even ministers in those days ordinarily did but in this condition i remained not long for the quartermaster of the troop being no scholar he would needs have me into it to assist him in making tickets though under the name and notion of clerk of the troop to whose office in strictness it belonged not but that work was not great and the rest of my employment was much what the same with that in the company i was not by my office either to wear armour or buff coat to stand upon guard or to ride out as a scout and accordingly i was not furnished with a charging horse war saddle pistols holsters or carabine but only with a little hackney and an ordinary saddle and bridle to ride along with the rest and here also i had the comfort and benefit of some devout person's company after some time mr thompson the chaplain of the regiment was sent to us to tender to us the covenant and to satisfy any that should make scruple which he did so effectually that i think not one refused it in this easy employment of clerk of the troop and deputy quartermaster i continued till the taking of liverpool by prince rupert in which space of time the garrison at latham making some sallies out in the night did such exploits as the colonels for the parliament took for unsufferable affronts and laid siege to it this was instrumental to bring an old house upon our heads for the prince going to raise the siege at york where he received a great overthrow the earl of derby brought him through lancashire where his army after two smart repulses took bolton by storm the works having been slighted and in very bad order putting about one thousand eight hundred to the sword then spreading themselves up and down the country made woeful works wherever they came my brother henry was so lately married that he easily secured those few goods he had together with himself and his wife in the garrison at warrington my brother thomas secured himself and some choice goods there also but the rest together with his poor wife and children were at the mercy of his enemies who were so severe that they scarcely left his family anything in the world to subsist on but his great stocks of cattle were seized upon by a great papist in the neighbourhood intentionally for his own use but eventually for my brother but my poor father sped much worse for they took the old man prisoner and used him most barbarously forcing him to march in his stockings without shoes and snapping his ears with their firelock pistols his house they plundered of everything they thought worth carrying away in carts which they brought to his door to that purpose and were sore troubled good men that the walls being stone and the roof well shot over within they could fasten no fire upon the house though they several times essayed so to do his stock of cattle they wholly drove away and he never had an hoof again amongst which was an excellent colt almost ready for service which in regard of its high metal and curious shapes resembling its dam which was a gallant mare he valued an eye rate this being exceeding hard to be taken they were resolved to shoot out of perfect malice to him but at last with difficulty they catched her and away she went with the rest not long before this when no such danger appeared as yet there was a design set on foot by one mr jerome who preached at sefton for the setting up of a free school there and i being very weary of vagarying about with soldiers and desirous to be in my own element again prevailed with him who knew me well at rainford and the character i was under there to nominate me for schoolmaster as accordingly he did 
but blustering times coming on apace, that design wholly broke, and by that means I was still with the troop when the country was in the condition I even now mentioned. We were sent for to Liverpool with all speed, and nothing but need, for we were in extreme danger to be surprised. Our captain was run away to the prince's party, and no doubt would have thought it meritorious to betray us. An army was just at hand to lay close siege to our garrison. The siege at Latham being raised, the Lathamers ranged up and down at pleasure, and the sea-coast parishes assigned for our quarters, almost wholly papists, especially as to the gentry. For my own part, I was in as great dangers and straits as any single man could likely fall into. But because God was graciously pleased, both to protect and support me, I shall in the conclusion of this chapter give them you under the heads of deliverances, as they deserve well to be called, especially some of them. The first, and that a most signal one, was this. We being riding in a full career, and I being nimbly though not strongly horsed, in the very front, my beast, for all his nimbleness, stumbled with that violence, that he pitched upon his forehead and threw his hinder parts over his foreparts, pitching me also upon my head so forcibly, that it was a wonder that my neck was not broken. Those that followed, coming in a single file, because of the straightness of the passage, in their full speed, never a one of them saw me till they were just upon me, nor could stay his horse when he did see me. But every one, which were almost all the troop, bounced, clearly over my head, and not one set so much as one foot upon me. Methinks I can hardly be excused from niggardice in my returns, if I do not acknowledge this to be two, if not many, deliverances in one. 2. When Liverpool was surrendered upon terms of free quarter, though Prince Rupert's men upon their first entrance did notwithstanding these terms slay almost all they met with, to the number of three hundred and sixty, and among others divers of their own friends and some artificers that never bore arms in their lives, yea, one poor blind man. Yet the first that I met with offered me quarter before I asked. 3. Though I lost there in a manner all I had, viz. my mare, books, money, and clothes, and my relations are in such distress as even now I declared, I was sufficiently provided for, and my spirit cheerfully supported, throughout a tedious imprisonment of about nine weeks though I neither knew where I should be supplied for a week beforehand, nor by what means I could expect deliverance. 4. When I was at last set at liberty, a free school was vacant, and as it were, waiting for me, in Over Whitley in Cheshire, with which I closed when I lacked a few weeks of twenty-one years old. And this was a perfect manumission from the hated life I had lived about two years among soldiers though my office was all along to employ my pen, not my sword, and to spend ink, not spill blood. If any one thinks I should, however, have made some other shift, and not have come among them, let him consider. 1. How young I was, viz. about nineteen years of age. 2. What straits I was in. 3. All the ministers in our neighbourhood, to a man, except only two tippling boon companions, and all serious Christians generally declared themselves satisfied with the cause of that party among whom I sheltered myself, whose opinion and practice all those that think I should have slighted them must grant to be a strong temptation. End of Extract from the Life of Adam Martindale, written by himself, for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 10, War and Conflict.